Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 1466 that says reorder routes to make all path lead to a city zero. So as the question says that we have to reorder some of the routes or the edges in such a way that all the edges or the paths will lead to city zero. So here basically you are given n cities number from 0 to n minus 1. So this is some sort of a tree like structure you are given. Further the connection between two nodes is represented by this connection Adam. Uh, that uh, our connection of phi represents the connection between two cities A and B and it is directed. So it is directed from city A to city B. Okay. Now uh, the question says that there is some event or something at a capital city 0. So, uh, so in order to make that event successful all the nodes should point to city 0. That's, I mean, that means that all, all people from all the different cities of city 1, 3, 2, 4, 5 apart from 0 all the different cities people can be able to travel to node 0 and that is only possible if there is a node from um, any city to node 0 right so in so the thing here is some of the nodes are inverted okay that are not correctly directed so guys if you take a look at the first example so here it uh, node 0 to node 1 you have something like this type of tray structure See, now if you imagine that there are some people living in a city 1 and how they can travel to city 0, there is no way because this edge is pointing incorrectly. So the new edge must be like this from pointing 1 to 0. Similarly from 1 to 3, uh, it is incorrect, de incorrectly detected. This is incorrect. So the new edge must be like this. That, that Then only the people of the city 3 will be able to travel to city 0, right? So similarly from 4 to 5, it is, direct, it is correct, but from here this 4 to 5 this is incorrect the new edge must be like this 5 to 4 then only the people at the city 5 can travel to city 0 so yeah there were three incorrect edges here in this example so we uh, return 3 as our answer that is the uh, number of edges that we need to change in order to make all the nodes travel to node 0 okay now if you take a look at the second example see there is one incorrect edge from 1 to 2 then so we reverse it from 2 to 1 similarly from 3 to 4 the edge was but that was incorrect so we reverse from 4 to 3 so total we reverse 2 of the edges so we return 2 as our answer and now in the third example uh, the same the node 1 is uh, pointing towards the node 0 and node 2 is pointing towards the node 0 so none of the edges are incorrectly directed so we return 0 as our answer so yeah i hope you guys understood the question till now the question is simple that we need to check all the edges and if any of the edges is away directly directed away from the zero then we need to have we have to change it and at the end we need to return number of incorrectly directed edges simple as it is so if you take a look at this example here so this is what the original tree that we have given and this is our expected result so there are many edges like the like this edge this edge then this both edge then this edge so in total four edges are that are incorrectly directed that we have to change in such uh, such that all the nodes will point to node zero only. Now let me ask you ask you first question. See see the edges can be present at any pop any part of the tree. It can be present here here here, right? And we need to check for all the edges. So in order to check for all the edges, we need to do some traversal something like BFS or DFS, right? These things are clear that in order to check for edges, we need to do traversal. Okay, a a either it be a BFS or DFS. Now, now let's let's assume we are doing DFS. Okay, so what would be the starting point of DFS? Starting point would be root uh, root zero, that is uh, root and node zero. Then only you will be able to check for all the edges, right? That is, is it is directly means it is uh, correctly directed towards the node zero or not? So, see. Uh, let's for the given example only uh, let me show you 0 1 5 2 6 7 3 4 so let's assume if you are using DFS then how DFS will help you to get your answer see you are starting DFS from root node 0 so it's from 0 to 1 you travel then from 1 to 2 you travel then from 2 to 3 and 2 to 4 then again you travel from 0 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7. So this is how DFS traversal will work, right? From root node to the depth of the node. Okay. Now we're traversing. See, these are the this is the direction of our traversal. Okay. 
and we are traversing away from the root node, right? Away from the root node. This is what DFS does. It travels from the root to the depth. Now, if you check that if any of the edges will match with this, with the original three, then it is a then it is the incorrect edge. Let's say you are traversing from zero to one, and the edges match. That is also an edge from zero to one. Then this is incorrect. So count. So what you will do? Increment your count. Okay. Then you are traversing from one to two. Is there any edge from one to two? No. no. Then this don't increase the count. Then two to three. Is there any edge from two to three? Yes. Increment the count. Plus one. Then same for two to four. Increment the count. Now check for this side. Zero to five. Any edge? No. Five to six. Any edge? Yeah. That is an edge. The original. So increment the count. And six to seven. No. So that means that by this way you can get uh, how many edges are incorrectly placed, right? Because here you are traversing away from the root node, and if any edge is there in the original tree that is also pointing away, right? Then that is the incorrect edge. Got it? Clear till here. So yeah, in also in the DFS call, same. We need to make a graph that is bidirectional in order to traverse all the nodes. Then second thing, if we are traversing from parent to child, then we have to check. Let's see here what we are traversing. We are traversing from parent to child. Then we have to check if there any uh, edge with from parent to child in this original graph also or not. If it is present, then it is incorrect. So we increment our answer. Simple it is. So yeah, by using these two only concept that initially we have to traverse by we have to get any graph or tree that is bidirectional. So to only so that we can only traverse all the edges. Right to traverse all the edges, and second thing for any edge we are traversing here, from parent to child, we will check if any if any same edge is there in the original graph or not. If it is present, then we will increment one to our answer because it is an incorrect edge. Simple it is. So yeah, based on these two things, we will write our code. Okay, now let me show you the coding part here. So see, uh, we first took one adjacent uh, vector, 2D vector of adjacent matrix. So that we can get uh, all the uh, to store all the bidirectional edges, right? In order to travel all the edges, we have, it has to be bidirectional, right? Now further, in addition to that, I also store one sign. It is either one or zero. One that means the edge from A to B is present in the original, original uh, connections or original graph. And uh, let's say from B to A. See if it is this is one, and if it is zero, then it is not present. Okay. Why we why we need this information? See, because if because if we are traversing from A to B, and if it is present in the original, that means that is in incorrect. So we have to add one to our answer, right? Correct. So uh, so in order to count the number of in order to count the number of incorrect edges, we need some information like this. Whether this edge is present in the original connection or not. Yeah, and if it is present in the original connection, then we will increment our answer. Simple it is. See, this is the simple DFS function. We are just adding the sign. Either it is one or zero. We are simply adding it to the count. And here, you see, the connection are from city zero to city one, like this connection zero to connection one in the original connection. So for that only we are placing a sign one, because that is the in uh, because if it is match here from child uh, here from parent to child, then it is incorrect, and we will increment one to our answer. As we won't, we will only simply add zero, so that doesn't affect. So yeah, that's all for the coding part. Now talking about the time and space complexity. The time complexity here is big O of n, and the space complexity is big O of n. It is the same for the DFS code. So yeah, this is for the time and space complexity. If you have to look for a time complexity, since we are traversing all the n nodes, so the time complexity is big O of n, and the space complexity is big O of n because this recursive stack will take some time complexity, right? So yeah, based on that, the space complexity is big O of n. So yeah, guys, that's all for this video. If you guys have any doubt, then do let me in the comment section. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.